All right, so in this video, we are going to be um, learning about uh, decision trees and how we can actually uh, perform the classification task from our machine learning models to uh, classify the data. So um, just to be clear, there are multiple models in machine learning that we can use to classify the data and precisely decision trees is one of them, right? So we're going to be learning about decision trees. So now uh, you might have heard from the classes you must have taken, you know, related to data mining or data analysis or maybe even machine learning. Uh, that uh, decision trees are just another form of data structure that that you know like we simply just go ahead and generalize our data based on um, <coughs> um, to make decisions right so decision trees can be used to uh, generalize on data so what hap what happens in decision trees it simply just sees our data set and it just goes ahead and creates these kind of rules so you can see right now we have um, we ha I'm just, I've just just attached a picture and uh, ba and by the way, we are going to be using the same data set. We are, we are going to be constructing the same data set from scratch um, using the theoretical or mathematical concepts that we need to understand before we can just go on to the implementation part. So this video is all about uh, learning how decision trees works and what is the mathematical background behind it. And in the next video, we are actually going to be implementing decision trees. All right. So, there, so there are four algorithms in decision tree. Number one is the um, IE3 algorithm, and this is. Uh, an algorithm which is which works only for the categorical or nominal data sets and yeah that's why it is limited it cannot work for the, the numerical values or it, it cannot perform the regression tasks or anything like that c4.5 on the other hand can only perform the regression tasks uh, or simply you know it just output it just takes in the numerical inputs right and card this is the uh, classification and regression trees this is the one that we are, we are going to be studying in this uh, video and this is the one that we are going to be understanding why I'm actually going to choose, why I'm picking this one is because the scikit-learn library that we are going to be using to implement decision trees in our next video uses the same this, uh, formulas that are involved in the card and basically what happens is that you can use card to perform both the tasks so you can either perform the classification task and you can also perform the regression task so you know well so th th that's that that's the advantage here right so moving on, so then what are the formulas in CARD? So you can, uh, I have to li like written a little definition here. CARD is an alternative decision tree building algorithm. It can handle both classification and regression tasks. The algorithm uses a new metric named Gini index to create decision points for classification tasks. A form the, so the only formula you need to know in the decision trees is the Gini index. Now what is a Gini index? Gini index is simply this formula. You can see that it, it, it calculates the probability of the data sets or attributes that we have. And don't worry if you don't understand this formula right now. We are going to be like taking a deep dive into this formula, and we are going to be using it uh, in our step-by-step -step, uh, calculation to calculate the the Gini index for each and every attribute. So you can see right now we have uh, I have written a little steps here. The the first step is to calculate the Gini index for each attribute, right? So don't worry if you don't understand this formula right now. You don't have to like you know be, you don't have to worry about this. So in the in the second step, we're going to use this Gini index, and we have, we'll calculate the weighted sum. So um, we have calculated, let's say, uh, um, some sort of a probability for each and every attribute, and then we will simply just go ahead and multiply that with the Gini index that we have calculated for each and every attribute, and then we're just going to add them up, and we are going to get uh, a Gini. Uh, we're going to get a value for that feature, and then we will have multiple values for every attribute that we have calculated, and out of all those, uh, all of those, all out of all those values, we will pick the lowest one, and that is going to be our first node. And we have to recursively repeat these, uh, this one, two, and three step until we have created a generalized tree for our data set or complete data set. So let's just go ahead and start working. Why am I? Uh, I'm sorry if I'm going a little fast today, uh, today in this video because, well, there's not a lot of things that you need to know, and we also need to move on to the implementation part. This is just a theoretical part, just for the sake, so that you, just for the sake of, so that you can understand this and what's the what's the mathematical background behind a decision tree, right? So this is the data set we are going to work on, and you can see that this data set is exactly based on the decision tree that we have shown you here. And this data set ha is quite simple to understand. It's 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 a golf decision data set. So what's happening is that based on some in input attributes such as outlook, temperature, humidity, and wind, we are making a decision. So it could be uh you know whether to play golf or not or, no, or not play golf, right? So so uh, the output can only be two. So it's a binary classification task. So it can only be either be no or either be yes. So you can see that we have some examples of that. So we are giving it some uh, uh, input attributes, and then it just simply just goes ahead and takes a decision. So what our decision tree has to do 
it just has to create a model based on this data set so it will just generalize on this data set right moving on so you can see that right now we have an outlook attribute so outlook attribute is what we need to calculate first because let's just start let's just start with the first attribute right so we could have we could start from any attribute but i'm picking outlook as the first attribute so let's start with that okay so now how do we start uh, by, uh, start calculating the Gini index for outlook attribute first of all we need to understand um how do we calculate the probability for each and every uh, each and every uh, nominal nominal category inside this outlook attribute so outlook attribute is simply you know there ha it has three categories so it could be either sunny or cost and rain as you can see that the whole data set only the whole data set or all the 14 rows have only these three categories sunny or cost and rain right so if you take a look at this we have sunny uh, the occurrence the number of times sunny has occurred in the in the in this column is five so one two three four and five so you can see that there are, we have five decisions for the sunny and similarly we're, we're going to count overcast so we overcast is one two and three and four so you can see we have four decisions for overcast and sp similarly for rain we, we have five rains and and we have five decisions for rain so now we know that so we're actually going to just go ahead and create so this is exactly what I've written here you can see that or outlook here has number of instances yes has two so sunny so let's say we have we take sunny so we have five sunny right and if you take a look at this for sunny we only have one uh, one here and the other one is right about here so we have only two yeses for sunny this is exactly what I've written and similarly the no's are three and the number of instances for total sunny is five and similarly we're going to calculate the same thing for overcast and we've done the same thing for rain with that being said now is the time we have to use this formula this uh, Gini index formula right so now all, all you need to do is you just need to write exactly the what what was written here right so sunny here is one minus the sum of the probabilities squared right so now what are the probabilities so as you can see that I have calculated this uh, I've just written down these probabilities right here so if you take a look at the sunny and the yes probability of the sunny you'll see that we have the probability of 2 upon 5 right and the second probability for no is 3 upon 5 so we can just simply put these probabilities in in the in the formula of Gini index so you can see that I'm just putting this 1 minus 2 upon 5 or 2 over 5 and then we have squared it and since the formula had a minus sign right here so it just simply goes ahead and multiplies that multiplies it with every single sum this is exactly why we have minus on before everything right so minus 2 upon 4 2 over 5 squared and then we have minus 3 over 5 squared and you can see that the, 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 the answer for this is 0 0.48 now we're going to calculate the same thing for overcast so if we have 4 upon 4 and 0 upon 4 and then we're going to square them and then we're just going to say 1 minus 4 upon 4 squared minus 0 upon 4 squared and then we have the answer as 0 and then similarly for uh, for uh, rain we're going to calculate this so we have these three answers here all right and then the third and the 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 third the second step for this was to calculate the weighted sum of Gini indexes for that feature so now we have the answer for each and every um, so we have calculated the Gini index for every nominal category here for every nominal uh, category right so we just we now we're going to calculate this uh, uh, with the weighted sum so you can see the weighted sum just uses the, no the the normal probability right so the total number of outputs right here you can see that the total number of outputs were 14 right so if you count the num total number of rows there are 1 2 3 4 5 and all the way to 14 and how many are how many instances of outlook are there for the decisions so you can see the number of instances are 5 so we just put there 5 over 14 and then we multiply this with the Gini index that the, uh, that we had right so we just simply just go ahead and multiply that and then we are going to you know add this and do the similar this the same thing for overcast and then we just going to go ahead and put 4 over 14 so the number of instances were 4 over 14 and then multiply it with the answer for Gini index here and this is exactly how we calculate the weighted sum so you can see that we are just summing all of the uh, all of them together and then we're also multiplying them so this is exactly what it means to calculate the weighted sum right and then we have the output as 0 0.342 now we have to repeat the same step for other attributes it's like temperature humidity and wind we have to use the same uh, same method to do this um, again and again and again and then we simply just go ahead and see so you see that we had the output 0 0.342 for uh, for the outlook at for the outlook attribute right now we will have we will get so if you calculate 
for temperature, humidity, and wind, you're going to get the output such as 0 0.439, 0 0.367, and 0 0.428. Now is the time we need to pick. Now, what 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 node should we pick first, right? So the first node we need to pick is so if you have to choose the lowest one, right? So 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 you can see that the lowest number here is 0 0.342 out of all these four. So we will pick Outlook as our first decision node or simply the root node because it's the first node so obviously it's the root node right so this is exactly now our decision tree looks like so Outlook was is the, is, uh, we have picked Outlook as our first node and Outlook has three branches and it's these branches are based on the number of categories Outlook has so it has sunny overcast and rain so we know that and now we have, our data set is divided into three three um three parts so the, the, the first the first part is just out, Outlook with sunny with sunny uh, as the category and the second one is the outlook with overcast category and the, and the third one is the rain with uh, with the with the rain only right so we need to calculate for them individually now so we need to re repeat the step repeat the same steps for each and every single data set that we have got in here right so if you take a look at this data set overcast right here you can see that all of the decisions for this are yes so we, we obviously need to, we need to put the we need to put the yes directly because even if you use the formulas and calculate for this we are ultimately going to get yes so we don't have to calculate for this and we automatically replace this whole data set with yes so whenever overcast is yes whenever we have it uh, you know outlook equals overcast in our input we can simply just go ahead and directly output yes right so this is something this is the first decision we have made for overcast now we need to do so now you can see that in the, in the sunny the decisions are multiple decisions right so we have no and yes as well so for this we now you know that you have to calculate for this right so we will calculate for this so now uh, I have done this directly because I've already explained how we do this for how we calculate all of this so if you calculate for this we have already gone with the outlook so we need to now do the same thing for temperature humidity and wind because we have already used outlook so we cannot use outlook again so, but with the help of sunny we're gonna calculate for temperature so the temperature has hot or hot mild Humidity has high, high and normal. Wind has weak and strong, and then we simply just go ahead and calculate Gini indexes for all of them. Then we simply just take out the weighted, weighted sum for all of them, and then finally we will have some values out of which we have to pick. And these are those values. So out of all of these values, you can clearly see that humidity has the lowest, which is zero. So we can pick humidity and replace humidity uh, as a, as the next decision node with the sunny that I had, right? And this is exactly you can see that after Outlook. So I'm just posting, uh, I'm just showing the that part of the uh, of the tree, and I've just ignored the rest of the tree. But you can see that now we have picked humidity for the sunny branch, and now in the humidity, if you take a look at our data set here, humidity is only two categories. So it could be uh, has uh, three. So we have hot, mild, and oh, uh, I'm I'm going I'm saying the temperature one. So humidity has only high and normal. So we have only two, right? So we are going to take humidity as higher. And normal and then we can just calculate for high and normal so you can see that if we just go ahead and uh, replace high with no uh, there's nothing wrong with that because the output decisions are only no here and the output decisions for normal is only yes so we don't have to calculate further so we'll just directly replace the sunny with uh, the sunny high with no and normal with yes right so so we have now made two decisions for humidity uh, for which means that and the humidity is going to be high the output is going to be no and the humidity is going to be normal it's going to be yes all right so it, it means we have to we can play golf right so now we need to do the same we need to repeat the same number of steps that we have done for humidity uh, to, to calculate for rain and why do we need to calculate how we do we know that we have to calculate for rain it's because um, well we have multiple outputs here so we have yes and no and if you had let's say multiple classes so if you had more cl number of classes if you if you have only a single class we don't have to calculate we can directly write that class as an output but since we have multiple outputs we need to calculate we need to make a decision node we need to find out the next decision node here all right so when we do this uh, for uh, rain we are going to get something like this so you can see I, I've already shown you how to repeat the steps so you can do the same thing for rain I believe in you that for that <laughs> And once you've done that, you'll see that you will end up with a decision tree that looks kind of like this. So we have sunny. Uh, so let's try to actually understand this decision tree. And there's not uh, any better way to understand this decision tree but to test it, right? So I'm uh, so right now you can see right now I have just uh, created an input for this decision tree. 
So let's say if I give this input to the decision tree, right? So we need to, so let's see how our decision tree is going to make decisions. So let's say the old outlook here is sunny, all right? So outlook is sunny, temperature is hot, humidity is high, and wind is strong. So how our decision tree is going to make decisions on this? So first of all, it's just going to go ahead and check outlook. Okay, so what is outlook? Outlook is sunny. So now it has to go here. Now if it's sunny, it will check whether the humidity is high or normal. So our humidity right here is high. So if it's high, it it will automatically decide that it's that that the that you don't have to play golf. Well, because that's how our decision tree just generalized our data, right? Let's say I change the outlook to something like um, to rain, and let's say I change this to um, um, strong, right? Okay. So now what? Let's see what the decision is. So if our outlook is rain, it's just going to go to the rain, and it will check for wind now. So our decision tree is going to check for wind. So what is wind? Is the wind weak or is the wind strong? Our wind is strong, so it will automatically decide to say, well, the output is simply going to be, yes, you can play, right? And let's say I change the outlook to um, overcast. So if you check, uh, if you check this out, you can see that. If you just go for overcast, we have a decision node that directly says yes. So we don't even have to check for all of these things. And by the way, if you have noticed one thing, that the temperature right here is not even included in the decision tree, which means that the temperature, so if you want to further pre-process the data, you can kind of get the idea that temperature here does not really matter in the data set because it just directly generalized over the other attributes and it was able to make decisions. So temperature doesn't really matter here. So, so from, from this, uh, from this, model you can kind of get the idea that you don't, you don't need temperature for anything so you can just directly remove temperature from your data set if you wanted because even if there is no temperature you will still be able to make uh, decisions just the way you want to right so because the decision tree does not have temperature all right so with that being said in the next video in the next part of this video we will be um, implementing the same uh, decision tree and we will be working on the same data set that I have you know simply just explained to you we will be using the same data set, we will be encoding these values, we will be applying the pre-processing and then we will be, you know, training our model, our decision tree model based on this data set and we will see that the decision tree will be able to make the same amount of decisions that it's making right here. So I hope you uh, kind of got the, got the idea that how the decision tree works and you know, this is not really important for, for you as a data scientist because the, the, the normally the, the, the tasks or the competitions that, that, you're, that you're going to join you don't need to have all of this information all you need to know is how do we really implement this in Python or any other language so why, act, why I'm actually explaining this to you is because well so um, so if anyone asks you or you know if it's a part of your interview or just for the sake of knowledge you can know you should know that what's happening behind it right so this is exactly why I've explained this to you so with that being said Thank you for watching, I uh, hope to see you in the next video.